Hello there, everybody. This is lesson five, and today you're talking about density. So in the last video, we talked about physical properties and physical changes, and density was one of them. And so today we're going to dive deeper into the density formula, how to use it, and also how to use table S in these density problems. So this is the same slide from the last video. Density is a measurement, and it measures the mass per the amount of volume. So depending on how much space it takes up, it looks at you know how much it, how much mass it has, and then creates that this proportion. Um, it can be used to test a pu the purity of a substance. So if you were to create or syn synthesize a compound in the lab, you know what its density should be, and if it's not quite that, then you know it's not totally pure. You can also find the density for all of the elements on table S. And the formula itself for density can be found on table T. So a quick few density facts. Density for water is grams per milliliter or grams per uh, cubic centimeter. And remember, density is mass over volume. So grams would be our unit of mass and milliliters would be our unit of volume. In this case, grams is still our unit of mass. And now our unit of volume is centimeters cubed. Um, objects that are less dense, and if we're talking about water, will float. Objects that are more dense in water will sink in water. And objects with the same density will kind of float there in the middle. So if we look at this picture, is the cork more dense or less dense than water? Is the rock more dense or less dense than water? Um, and then lastly, an object is made of the same material. A small piece and a large piece will have the same density. So what I mean by that, if I have, you know, a large cube of, let's call this iron, Fe, and I measure the mass and I measure the den the um, volume, and I get the density is 7.87 grams per centimeter cubed. If I just took a very small corner of this, and now have a very, very tiny cube. Yes, the mass is different. Yes, the volume is different. But it's still in the same proportion. The density would still be 7.87 grams per centimeter cubed. So if you're dealing with the same object, it doesn't matter the size of it. it the density of that same object will always be the same. So density is the first of many equations that we will be talking about this year. Whenever we're do doing these math-based questions, I like to follow a set of steps to make sure that I'm always doing it the best as I can. So I'll write down the formula, list out the variables, write down the given info from the questions, then plug all that into the formula which we have written down, solve for your unknown. Now it's also super important that you're keeping track of your units because in this formula and in many others, um, you can kind of make sure you're math is set up correctly or that your final answer is correct because all the answers should cancel, all the units should cancel out except for what you are looking for. So when we're doing these density questions, sometimes you have to calculate the volume of whatever we're talking about. So here are a bunch of different common volume formulas. Don't worry, this is not a geometry class. We don't have to worry about that. But this is really the only one we're going to be talking about today or kind of in this unit of density. The volume is length times width times height. So try this question. What is the volume of a fish tank that has a length of 75, a width of 25 centimeters, and a height of 40 centimeters? So you should have gotten 75,000 cubic centimeters. Again, your first step should be to list out, to write down your equation, list everything out, plug everything in, Boom, you got yourself your answer. And the centimeter cube comes into play because you do centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, and that's where that comes in. Uh, next, another very common way to calculate volume is using water displacement. And this is used for these irregular or weird shaped objects. So if we wanted to calculate the volume of SpongeBob, there is no volume formula for him. So we can still do it. We're not going to freak out and panic. What you do is you fill a graduated cylinder with an amount of water. So right now we're at 
50 milliliters of water. So that will be our initial volume, 50 milliliters. Now, you put SpongeBob into here, and this is where it is now. So you want to look at how the water changed. So now the water is over here, and that is 52 milliliters. Again, you want to make sure you, if this is 50 and this is 60, you have to figure out how much each thing goes up by. And each, each line goes up by 2 mils. So our final volume is 52 milliliters. So is SpongeBob's volume 52 milliliters? The answer is no, because we still have to find the volume of our object. So the 52 just represents the volume of the water and the object. So if we do volume of the final minus the initial volume, you get 2 milliliters, and that is our volume for SpongeBob. So with this volume, what is the volume of this scuba diver? Do, diver? do the same thing. Okay, so again, we're going to do final volume minus initial volume. Initial volume is 3.4 milliliters. Our final volume is 5 milliliters. If you do 5 minus 3.4, you get 1.6 milliliters. Okay. Solving for density. We're gonna, again, we're going to go through these um, pretty quickly because density should be a review. So, uh, what is a wooden block has a volume of 24 cubic centimeters and a mass of 17 grams. What is the density? So, I can start you out by saying density formula is density is mass over V. Density is, we're looking for that. Mass is 17 grams, and our volume is 24 centimeters cubed. So that should be enough to get you started. Okay, so if we follow everything through, we plug in our values, we should get density is 17 grams divided by 24 cubic centimeters, and we get 0 0.71 grams per cubic centimeter as our density. Now, would this float in water? Okay, density question number two. A metal object has a density of 34.2 grams per cubic centimeter and a mass of 50 grams. What is the volume? So the density vol equation is that. And now we're solving for volume. So go ahead and give it a go. So if we're doing this, we plugged the listed out all of our uh, numbers. We plug everything, now we have to cross multiply to solve for V. And when you do that, you divide both sides by 34.2 to get V by itself, and your volume is 1.47 centimeters cubed. If you also wanted to use the density is mass over volume equation, or well, triangle, and then say, well, we're looking for volume, so we can ignore that and just do mass divided by density, you could do that as well. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with the triangle, totally ignore it. Okay, number 18. A marble has a density of 1.4 grams per cubic centimeter and a volume of 3.1 centimeters cubed. What is the mass? So if we plug in everything, we list out our numbers. Give it, plug everything into our formula. Again, we're cross multiplying for m, and we get 1.4 times 3.1. Uh, grant the centimeters cubed cancels out, and we're left with 4.3 grams. Again, if you do the density triangle, density mass volume. If we're looking for mass, you cover that up. Density times volume. Okay, last question. What is the mass of a piece of aluminum if the volume is 12.3 centimeters cubed? Now, your hint here, use table S, because when you list all of your variables, you'll notice that you are missing something. So, you are missing density, and you're not able to calculate it from the question, but your hint was to use table S. So table S says the aluminum's density is 2.7. So if you use that and plug everything in, you get your mass to be 33.21 grams.
friends. Now, that is it for today. On the next video, we will be talking about chemical properties, chemical changes, and separation techniques. Bye!